Watch this video before you start a pressure washing business. In this video, we're gonna kinda go over three points that you need to consider before you really get started in the wash game. You know, washing can be very profitable. If you really put a business together and you have a business plan and you market correctly, you can make good money, above average money in the pressure washing game. But watch this video all the way through. I got three points for you to consider about the ugly, ugly truth, truth of starting a wash business. Before we jump into this, if you're looking to launch your pressure washing business off on the right foot, you want to learn all the ways, all the substrates on actually the process of washing, right? There's a right way and there is a wrong way that will get you a lot of insurance claims, a lot of callbacks, and a bunch of unhappy customers. So grab the How to Wash course. Mike Vidan, Justin Rogers, Cody Yarbrough, and myself came together, the core four, and invented the how to wash course. I will put this a link in the description, a link in the comments to where you can get it. It's got rave reviews. It's been taken from a bunch of new washers and these guys are compressing their learning curve on the actual technical side of how to wash commercial properties, residential properties, flat work substrates, and all the chemical knowledge in between. Go ahead and get it. Okay, so you're starting your pressure washing business, you're thinking about getting started, you're entertaining this idea, you're seeing the money the guys are making, maybe you're seeing the thumbnails that we're putting out. All of that is real money, okay? But a lot of times, what we're gonna put out there is the money that we're making, but you also have to understand, that's gonna be a gross number, right? The net, usually if you're gonna be taking care of your finances properly, is gonna be 40, 50, 60% net, somewhere around there. If you're doing it the right way, that's what you should be getting paid. And if you're looking at some of these bigger numbers that you're seeing, you're like, man, I used to not make that in a week. Absolutely, Absolutely. Pressure, pressure washing can be very profitable. profitable. My three points that I have for you today about the ugly truth of starting a pressure washing business, let's jump into them right now. Number one, it's always gonna cost more than you think. Investing in any business is always going to be beyond your calculation. It's like almost a bad contractor who tells you they can build the house for 100,000. It ends up being 200,000 on the build. That seems to be what every single business starts out as. It's usually gonna be double the investment that you think simply because you're brand new to the equipment, you're brand new to the marketing that's needed in this business, you're brand new to maybe investing in businesses in general, right? And so you're calculating all of these numbers up and you're saying, hey, hey, I know I can get this piece of equipment for $2,000, this and this. I can piece it together, maybe plumb it together. And you probably don't really know how to plumb anything because you're, you're brand new, new or you don't know how to run proper electrical. We've seen some guys have some car fires because they didn't run the proper electrical, right? They caught on fire. You gotta be really careful. So here's the thing, it's always gonna cost more than you think when you get started in pressure washing. You're gonna be doing a lot of on-site sweating, cleaning, learning, and it's going to be a much bigger investment. I will not hesitate to say, you're probably gonna be working when you get started 40 to 60 hours, maybe even 70 hours a week if you're doing this full time. If you're doing it on the weekends and really trying to push the marketing throughout the week and then doing your jobs on the weekends so you can leave your full time job, it's gonna take up your whole weekend, especially for the first year. So understand, it's always going to cost more than you think. Number two, on-site troubleshooting is gonna hit you in the mouth. This is especially true for you guys who are not technically driven, guys who have not worked on cars before, who have not worked on small engines before, and that's, that's a, lot a lot of people, of people right? right? Looking at this stuff and saying, hey man, I know I can make a bunch of money, but here's the truth. Pressure washers are prone to breaking simply because everything is under pressure and you have a gasoline engine, or whether it's an electric pump, right? you still have pressures and seams and plumbing. These things eventually wear out. It boggles my mind to see some guys who get started who cannot believe that their pump went bad in three months. Yes, that's like normal timing for an electric pump that you're running bleach through every single day, especially because some of you guys are not flushing out your pumps and then you're wondering how come 
it went bad. Look, on-site troubleshooting and problems, when you get to the site, because it doesn't break in your driveway, it breaks when you crank it up on that first job. So make sure that you have the right tools. You're not gonna have the right tools for probably a good three months of stuff breaking, simply put, because you didn't prepare, you didn't know that was gonna go bad. So on-site troubleshooting and fixing things is always going to be the name of the game because of pressures, because of seams, air leaks will kill you. So you gotta make sure that you kinda know how to maintain your equipment. That's as important as the marketing side, okay? Number three, back to what I said, marketing is the number one thing that you have to figure out how to get a skill set in in this game. You have to know who you're marketing to, who has the money, who wants their stuff cleaned. Do not market to people who cannot afford your service. That's just, That's a, just dumb a dumb business, business move, move anyway. anyway. Okay, Chick-fil-A picks where they put Chick-fil-A's at. They're not just picking random real estate. McDonald's even, even though they're on the cheap side, they're a major corporation, the biggest restaurant chain in the world. They selectively pick where they're going to put those multi-million dollar buildings that charge tens of freaking $2 for a hamburger. Okay, so there's a lot of calculation that's going into their marketing and their location choice, all right? So understand, what that means is they understand where the people are, they understand how many cars are driving past this piece of real estate a day, how many they think they can capture based on that number. You have to do the research into your target market, understand who has your money, where they are, who's willing to pay, okay? And usually it's people who are above that average income line. Sometimes middle class definitely does buy, but the best people to purchase from you are people who are affluent, right? Because this is a luxury service. This isn't something that technically people need unless they're a restaurant and it's a liability for the sidewalk to be slick. So understand that 99% of pressure washers that I talk to from the beginning do not spend enough on marketing. They don't. they don't. They're unwilling to. They think that it's this ethereal thing because they can't touch it, they can't turn the wrench on it. It's like, what is SEO? What is a website? All of these things blow their minds that they're gonna have to spend this money that right off the bat, they don't get a piece of equipment for that they can look at, okay? Marketing is the most important piece of this business and 99% of new pressure washers, even guys who take the courses, they don't spend enough on it. They think that 15% that we talk about is their money. And then they go spend it on a bass boat or a kayak or cars, stuff, or God forbid alcohol, Lord have mercy, don't do that. But they, but they will go, will go spend, spend it on it stupid, stupid shit. shit. Don't waste your money on that stuff. Understand that a lot of this, especially in the first year, you're like Sisyphus pushing this rock up a hill it's gonna be difficult to get momentum. This is in every business, not just pressure washing. It's in every business. That first year and a half, maybe even two years, is going to be pushing this thing uphill as far as marketing goes. But I will reassure you, once you get to the top of that hill, it starts becoming a coast and you're able to just understand how to write the check. But getting guys to write the check is like pulling teeth on a boar hog. Dude, it is so difficult. But if you can break that mentality, and understand that your marketing is going to cost, and that is what you need to really invest in heavy, you will have a leg up on all of these other guys who are not willing to invest. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Quick video, but this is the ugly truth about getting started in a pressure washing business, okay? It's always gonna cost more than you think. On-site troubleshooting is gonna bust you right in the mouth because stuff does not break in your driveway. And three, 99% of brand new pressure washers do not invest enough in marketing. And I urge you, to challenge that piece of your brain who doesn't want to spend the money on marketing to invest in the marketing and watch it give you heavy ROIs down the line. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to know more about the Lean and Mean Academy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.